Aloha, and welcome to Cosmic Questions with Spaceman Steve. Well, if we haven't met before, I'm an astronomer who works at the James Clark Maxwell Telescope right here in Hilo, Hawaii. And today, I'll be answering the question, what is an analemma? Friends, I want to show you something amazing. This right here is called an analemma. It is one of the most challenging photographic endeavors that one can pursue. It takes incredible dedication and precise timekeeping. This particular analemma was taken by Jack Fishburne in 1998 and 1999. Now the word analemma comes from the Greek word meaning support, and it refers to the pedestal that supports a sundial. The picture shows the position of the sun at the exact same time every day throughout the course of a year. Now if you want to be part of a very elite group of photographers, capture an analemma. Way less people in history have done this than have climbed Mount Everest. And the absolute epitome of analemma photography came in 2006 with the world's very first tutu lemma, which is an analemma that contains an image of a total solar eclipse. The amount of planning, precision, and dedication it takes to capture an image like this cannot be overstated. So what's the deal here? Why are we looking at a figure eight in the sky? Well, each day the sun traces a lovely arc across the sky as it rises in the east and sets in the west. If you live in the northern hemisphere, the sun will appear in your southern sky. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, the sun will appear in your northern sky. Throughout the year, the height of the sun changes. In the wintertime, it completes a small arc across the sky. The smallest arc occurs on the winter solstice, which takes place on December 21st in the Northern Hemisphere and June 21st in the Southern Hemisphere. You might know that on this day we get the shortest amount of daylight throughout the year, and this occurs because the sun is above the horizon for the least amount of time. Over the next six months, the height of the sun increases until the summer solstice on June 21st in the Northern Hemisphere and December 21st in the Southern Hemisphere. The reason for these changes are due to Earth's constant tilt. We are tilted at 23.5 degrees with respect to our orbit around the sun. When we are pointed towards the sun, we experience summertime. And when we are pointed away from the sun, we experience wintertime. In our analemma, we can pick out the solstices, when the sun is lowest or highest in the sky at the same time of day. This analemma was photographed in the Northern Hemisphere. If it were done in the Southern Hemisphere, then the small loop of the figure eight would be down at the bottom. The angle of the analemma changes with your latitude on the Earth. Okay, so the Earth's tilt explains why the sun appears to move along this direction of the analemma. But where does the width come from? And why does this figure eight look so uneven? To answer these questions, you need to know a little something about how planets like the Earth orbit stars. So hold on tight, because in two steps, I'm going to teach you enough about Kepler's laws of planetary motion to make you super fun at parties. One, the orbit of a planet around a star is not a perfect circle. It's a squished circle, which is called an ellipse. Two, a line joining the star to the planet sweeps out equal areas in equal amounts of time. This means that when a planet is closer to the sun, it moves faster. And when it's farther from the sun, it moves slower. For planets in our solar system, the closest approach to the sun is called the perihelion, and the farthest distance from the sun is called the aphelion. So picture this, you're on the Earth, and the Earth rotates 360 degrees around its own axis over the course of a day and a night. How long does that take? If you said 24 hours, you're incorrect. It only takes 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. The reason that we call a day 24 hours is because while Earth is rotating around on its own axis, it also travels a little distance in its orbit around the Sun. So, one revolution of 360 degrees does not actually bring us back to our starting position 
with respect to the sun. On average, we need an extra 3 minutes and 56 seconds to turn that bit more so we are facing the sun at the same time as we were the day before. But remember that since the speed of the Earth changes around its orbit, this is just an average. Sometimes we need a little bit more time, and sometimes we need a little bit less. Here's a fun thing to do to illustrate this point and to kill a little bit of time. Go outside on January 1st. This is near perihelion, when the Earth is closest to the Sun, so we are moving faster in our orbit on average. That means that we're covering more distance, so we have to add more than 3 minutes and 56 seconds to ensure that the Sun will be in the same place in the sky at the same time as it was the day before. So go outside on January 1st at noon and drive a stake into the ground. Look at the shadow that's created by the position of the sun in the sky, and make a mark where the tip of that shadow lies. The next day, exactly 24 hours later, go outside and repeat the experiment, and you'll notice that the sun is a bit more east in the sky than it was the day before. Day after day, go outside on the exact same time and repeat the experiment, and you'll realize that the sun gets more and more and more east each day you repeat the experiment. This happens until about the beginning of April. This is the point where the Earth's orbital speed is slowing down enough that it's beginning to move slower than the average. Then, predictably, the effect is the opposite. You will start to notice the sun becoming more and more west in the sky again. This happens until the beginning of October, where it will switch direction once more until January 1st where it will be at the exact same point as when you started. After you've marked the position of these shadows throughout the course of the year, stand back and take a look. You'll notice that you've drawn an analemma on the ground. Timing is critical for this experiment. If you are off by even 15 seconds, it can make your analemma look wonky. Note that the equinoxes, when we get the same amount of daylight and nighttime, occur at the middle points of the analemma, and these angles are equal to the Earth's orbital tilt of 23.5 degrees. So the analemma is the path that our Sun appears to take in the sky throughout the course of a year. The up and down bit comes from the Earth's axial tilt, and the side to side bit comes from the elliptical orbit that we have around the Sun. That means that different planets that have different elliptical orbits or tilts will see different analemmas. For a planet with no tilt and a perfectly circular orbit, the Sun will be in the same position at the same time of day all throughout the year, and the analemma would simply be a dot. For a planet that had a circular orbit and a significant tilt, you would get a perfectly symmetric figure 8. And if a planet had an elliptical orbit, but no tilt, the analemma would look like a line. For a cool case study, let's take a look at Mars. Mars has a similar tilt to the Earth, and an elliptical orbit. But its perihelion and aphelion are actually closer to the equinoxes, rather than the solstices like here on the Earth. This creates a teardrop shape, rather than the nice figure 8 that we have here on the Earth. And guess what? Earth's equinoxes and solstices actually shift. They change date over a 26,000 year cycle. That means that we won't have this figure eight shape forever. So enjoy it while you can. Well, mahalo nui. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Spaceman Steve.